Hi there, this is Shubha. Welcome back to Fat360. We haven't seen each other for a while now, right? I hope you all are keeping safe and taking enough precautions during this COVID-19 pandemic situation. In the last episode of Delhi, we covered a few places like Rajkhat, Jantar Mantar, Birla Mandir, and Timurti Bhavan, etc. Right? Today, we are going to see two places which have great significance uh, you know, in our history. It is the Red Fort and Qutub Minar. In a previous episode about Agra Fort, we did see how beautiful the Mughal architecture was, right? And uh, Agra Fort was a main residence of Mughal emperors then. When the capital shifted from Agra to Delhi, the main residence of Mughal emperors became the Red Fort. From a construction or the architecture standpoint, there are a lot of things common between Agra Fort and Red Fort. Now let's go see how beautiful Red Fort is and how different it is from Agra Fort. It's the third day of our Delhi Agra trip. For our convenience, we have hired a cab for the entire day, but I prefer going by the metro as Delhi metro is well connected to all places. The ticket counter is near to the parking area. It's better to use the app to buy tickets rather than standing in the long queue. The fort entrance was a bit far from there. Like we saw in other places, there are rickshaws that will take you to the entrance and you just need to pay 10 rupees per person for the ride. This is a very familiar view, right? Yes, this is exactly where the Prime Minister hosts our national flag on the Independence Day. Redfoot is a massive palace made in red sandstone. In 1638, Shah Jahan moved the capital from Agra to Delhi, and it was during this time that the Red Fort was built. It took a decade to build Red Fort. And it is said that it is much more well planned than the Agra fort. The Red Fort became the seat of Mughal Kingdom until it fell in the hands of the British. The fort is built in 254 acres of land, so you can imagine how huge it is. As soon as you enter, you feel that you have entered a market because all that you see are shops selling handicrafts, bags, dresses, ladies, beauty, accessories and so on. Yes, it is a market. But you need to walk further to get inside the red fort. At the entrance is a drum house where the musicians used to play during ceremonies. It is followed by the Diwani Arm which is the courthouse for common people. You see an elevated throne for the king to sit during the court timings. Look at how vast the entire complex is. And you see many structures in this vast complex. And each of those structures 
has its own significance. The design of the gardens in the Mughal architecture stands out for its beauty. There used to be an era where all the fountains had rose water flowing through it. Now we are off to the iconic tower that stands for victory. Qutub Minar served as a victory tower when Muhammad Ghori took over the Rajput king Prithviraj Chauhan in 1192. Later, Ghori's viceroy Qutub Uddin Aibak, who went on to become the first ruler of Mamluk dynasty, began the construction of Qutub Minar. Qutub Minar is 73 meter tall. It's a very fine construction and no doubt about it considering the era that it was built. This is the world's tallest brick tower and has remained here for 800 years. The Qutub complex has Khawad al-Islam Mosque, Alai Darwaza, Alai Minar, Alauddin's Madrasa and Tomb, Iron Pillar, the Tomb of Imam Zameen, Sanderson's Sundial and Major Smith's Kapola. Now let's look at some of the construction details. The first, second and the third stories are made of pale red sandstone. Fourth is only marble and fifth is a mix of marble and sandstone. The structure has a diameter of 14.32 meters at its base and it tapers upwards and reaches to 2.75 meters. There is a mosque right below the minar and it is believed to be the first Muslim mosque in North India. This mosque was built from the ruins of 20 temples that were destroyed during the invasion.
Qibla that you see inside the Qutb complex was originally erected during the time of Chandragupta II of the Gupta dynasty. The pillar is famous for its non-rusted state. It's made of 99% iron and it's been there for almost 1600 years now. Alauddin Khilji wanted to build the Alai Minar twice as big as Qutb Minar but after his death his ambitions were never carried on by anyone Today Alai Minar stands at 27 meters to the north of Qutb Minar <laughs> 